Hi guys, this video is just going to be a quick overview of your US history movie project. Um, remember, we are picking a movie that um, kind of discusses or shows a historical event. And we are going to be comparing, contrasting that with what actually happened in history. It does have to be US history. Um, if there's a movie that you really, really want that's not uh, specifically US history, you can talk to me. You just might have to write a little bit more. So if you're not interested in writing more, find one that's a US history um, movie or about a person in US history and you'll be okay. So if we're looking at the top here at our paper, let me zoom in here. Um, I'm just gonna read. You will write a paper on a movie about made about historical events. You will describe aspects of the movie that are historically accurate. You will describe aspects of the movie that are not historically accurate. There's the compare and contrast. Um, you will examine bias shown of the film by the writers, directors, and or producers. The paper will be four to six pages in length, six being the limit, please don't go over six. Uh, for every line of work written less than four pages, there will be one point taken away from your grade. So make sure it is four pages so you don't lose any points for that. Um, you will also present, we'll present really quickly on our findings in class. So let's look at our rubric. This is like a checklist for your essay. If you have every single one of these, you are almost guaranteed an A, okay? So please, 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 before you turn it in, go through this rubric, check off the boxes, make sure that you have everything. Um, like I said, you'll lose one point for every line of work short of four pages. Uh, the paper must be at least four pages. Um, five points is uh, having your paper double spaced in Times New Roman with 12 point font. So um, 12 point size, Times New Roman font, double space. If you need help doing that on your iPad, um, I can help you or ask your friends because I've shown a lot of people, but I'm willing to show more, okay? Because that's easy points. Five points for little to no grammar mistakes or spelling mistakes. Um, notice how that's five points for little to no. Um, if you have a little bit, that's, that's okay, but make sure you're proofreading your paper before you turn it in. That means reading it before you turn it in. Um, reading it out loud helps that as well. Five points for having five references. One would be the movie itself. So you really only need four sources um, for this paper uh, plus the movie. Uh, five points for your bibliography page. That's the separate page that we've been trying, trying to work on, um, which is your works cited page where all your sources go. Plugging those sources into EasyBib, uh, that website that cites your source, and uh, pasting it on a separate page in your document, uh, which is your bibliography page. Um, 20 points. Okay, listen, this part, you may be like, Miss Grady, we already just talked about uh, font and formatting. We are trying to get uh, better at formatting our papers, so much so that 20 points, again, is Times New Roman, 12 point font, double spacing, left aligned and paragraphs indented, okay? So yes, including the five points that I said already, 20 more points <laughs> is gonna be like formatting, um, formatting things. So let's, let's look at this, uh, five, 10, well, no, five, 10, 30 points, okay, is just you formatting your paper correctly, okay? I didn't count the grammar or references because, you know, that's you finding information, but the other stuff is formatting. 30 points is formatting your paper. No excuse that we can't do that, okay? Uh, so, like I said, we split this up into parts. Part one, this is the first part that you should be working on, um, is watching your movie and then typing uh, up a summary of what happened in the movie, okay? Uh, the summary should not be word for word everything that happened in the movie, okay? A summary should be short enough that it's not um, word for word, but um, long enough that it, it presents the beginning of the movie, the middle of the movie, and the end of the movie, okay? 
So uh, we should be working on that right now. That's 15 points. Uh, part two, which will be next, is a historical account of the content in the film covered. So we're looking up what actually happened in this historical event that the movie is covering. And uh, you're finding sources for that. You have to include both primary and secondary sources. So if we're thinking, I'm looking over at my poster because that's a really good reference in my room. Uh, a primary source is a firsthand account or uh, object that was written or created during the time period um, that this event happened, okay? So it's from the person written, um, from the person, from the time that these events occurred. Um, and then a secondary source is, is, is a written, a written account, not account, a written a piece of work or object that was created after the events, way after, okay? Um, so we that's review for you. I'm sorry my brain isn't working that it's, I'm struggling to function right now. Um, if you're watching this, it's the day after the 1920s party. So my brain's still like woo -woo, all over the place. Um, but that is what primary and secondary sources are, okay? So you have to include those in your historical accounts um, talking about what actually happens in the events. Um, part three, this is where we are comparing and contrasting, uh, starting to compare and contrast the historical account, what actually happened versus what they show in the movie. So you're correctly identifying the differences between um, the historical accounts versus the portrayal, excuse me, from the film. Uh, part four, is finding out what bias may have influenced the changes from history, uh, the events that happened versus what they showed in the final film. You're gonna have to look at the prior work from those who made the film. Bias, you'll remember, is inserting your own ideas and opinions into um, a piece of work. So how did the director or the writers uh, influence the final outcome of the movie and the differences that they put in uh, from the uh, events that actually happened. So you're gonna have to look at first who directed the movie or who wrote the screenplay and see what work they have done previously. Have they done a lot of historical films? Have they done a lot of films about women? Uh, if you're doing a movie yeah. on a historical, a figure that's a woman? Have they done a lot of movies um, about justice or um, a certain time period? We're looking at that. We're seeing what biases, what previous experiences may have influenced this film. Uh, and then the final part uh, is probably one of the easiest parts besides the um, synopsis or the summary and the first paragraph. It's you're making an argument for changes to be made to the film that would be more historically accurate. So how would you change the film to be, to fit more with the events that actually happened in history? How would you make it more accurate? How would you argue to make it more accurate? Okay. Uh, the total project is worth a hundred points. It's a lot of points and it is a lot of work. That is why we are breaking it up in parts. Um, so please, please, please stay up to date with the um, deadlines that I put out. Um, let's look down at the second page. If your movie is rated R, I need your parent or guardian or someone at home um, that is an adult to sign this permission slip that you are able to watch this film for this project. You may be thinking, oh, Miss Grady, um, I... I, my, my family watches rated R movies all the time. Okay, it should be easy to get this signed then, right? Uh, so make sure that you're putting the name of the movie, uh, that it's rated R for either language or um, I don't know, like violence, uh, stuff like that, okay? What, why it's rated R, that's just really short, just put that there and then have your parents sign it, bring it back to me. Um, if you wanna print this out, that's fine. I also have a couple copies left in my room. 
Uh, you may need to grab two because some of the copies printed uh, one sided. Um, and I don't want you to lose this first part uh, because you're turning in a permission slip. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.